all right so before we get off into the video i do want to mention a service that would help the channel out tremendously which is audible if you sign up you'll get a free trial to several audiobooks and podcasts that you can enjoy in your spare time now magic crest i see you guys out here rocking those cheap little tattoos where'd you get that pay less be a man get yourself a magic crest tonight so a magic crest could be seen as a database of all that family's mage craft up until that point of time. The crests themselves come in many different shapes and sizes depending on how long that family's been around and the history of that family's mage craft overall. It is a collective body of magic circuits strung together that allows the user to access those spells that the family has learned. Some things will come more natural than others, some things won't. But the most important part is that you're making it easier for the next person that you pass it off to. Again, this is why people like Kanaf was so lethal because he had nine generations of magecraft ready to go before they even cut the umbilical. As you probably expect, the more each generation puts into a crest, the more complex the circuitry becomes, and thus those powers become more effective for that user. The job of maintaining the crest is usually given to the family heir. In the event that the crest does function properly, that user is going to bypass a lot of hardship even if the magus never studied that spell in their life the moment they pop in that magic crest it's gonna be as if they figured it out yesterday the operation is very similar to what you would see from a normal magic circuit where the master dumps portions of their magical energy into that part of their body and then release one of those spells once they've had enough time speaking of which Another thing that you're gonna find that comes in handy is that no one would even be aware that you had the magic crest until you pass energy through it since it normally can't be seen. So unless you're coming from some top-notch family, this could easily make for one of your best trump cards. Kiritsugu, for example, in one of his best spells, Time Manipulation, which allows for him to effectively offset time, giving him the room to accelerate or decelerate his presence on his own accord that power does not belong to him that power comes from having access to his family's crest so all the time that he would have spent learning about that skill was able to be placed in other areas not only that but kirisugu didn't even inherit the full crest since his father got hunted down for doing his research his foster mother was only able to scrounge up a fragment of the crest from the association which means that he's really supposed to have more powers than that and who knows what that could be. You have the scene with Ren's magic crest, where she fires gander bullets at Shiro. Again, the information for that spell is being issued through the crest. The locations that you find these crests can vary depending on the magus. Kirisugu's is on his back, Ren has hers on her arm, and Olga has hers in her forehead. This doesn't matter too much since you can only see it when it's in use. Unless it's on your forehead, then in that case, you might want to wear a scully. Now, when it comes to obtaining a crest, the process is similar to transplanting an organ. It carries the same amount of importance of an organ, and just like any surgery, the transplanting of a crest can go just as wrong. It is for that reason that most people tend to just keep it in the family. Less time, less stress worrying about is there gonna be any casualties. And even if you're in the family, there's a high chance that the transplant still might fall through. As a fail safe to make sure that all of their family studies don't go down the drain, mages will often just transplant segments at a time to heighten the surgery's success rate. Another thing that you have to look at is that you usually cannot divide these powers, meaning that only one person can thrive from having the crest. That means there's gonna be a whole lot of family feuds to get that power. Somebody's gonna get kicked to the curb. Just hope that it isn't you. Speaking of getting kicked to the curb, it would be disrespectful 
disrespectful not to bring up Toko Aozaki. As the child, Toko was the sister that didn't inherit her family's magic crest, which means that she had to go out and get it on her own. Through her studies, she was able to find a way to take the magic crest from other mages and manipulate them to her own desire. Unlike what you would see from the normal format, Toko's magic crest floats behind her in the form of wings. They are not physically attached to her body, meaning that she doesn't have to deal with the pain associated as most mages would normally. If you remember how Kirisugu's time manipulation almost killed him majority of the time, Toko can circumvent that. The downside to her having this artificial crest is that since she doesn't actually own these crests, she has to keep the owners alive to continue using their power. But come on man, Toko came way ahead of the game and that's why she has a facility just to hold those mages captive. In her main story, which on the Holy Night, is mentioned that just the power of her crest and territorial advantage alone made her 10 times stronger than her sister's base power. You have the scene in UB Dub where Ren was about to get diced up by Ku Cullen. But then she used her magic crest to change her body's mass, allowing for her escape. And then, of course, you have the sickest version of the magic crest, which comes from my guy Zoken. The crest worms. The same worms that were implanted into Sakura as a child. As we saw in Heaven's Field, these worms over a period of a decade were able to foster enough energy to turn Sakura into a second grail vessel during the fifth war. Unfortunately, since the crest is more on the artificial side, the worms would eat at Sakura's nerves and her insides just from having them in her body. The worms also give Zoken reign over the person that has them, since he can make the worms feast on that person whenever he wants. If you do see a boost in power, it's going to be detrimental to your health. You take a look at how Karya had access to Zoken's insects and he was barely staying alive. And finally, the foundations of the Magic Crest usually starts out with the first generation in planting a fragment of a mystic code or some type of phantasmal creature during its creation. These are the mages that have it the worst since they're the ones that have to kick things off. I'm going to catch you guys on the other side. I'm about to cop me one right now. Let me know what you guys think like the video if you enjoyed it shout out to all the patrons and i will be back with more tight moon content it is your boy sire i'm out <laughs>